welcome to fedora um uh, welcome to nest um uh, uh this presentation is about qa and i'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can get started with qa so at this point i'm talking to a presentation and i'll be taking all the questions at the end note that this presentation has been kind of made record friendly so post uh, uh, after the record, after the recording is over and it's live on YouTube, you still can access all the links. You don't have to actually take the links anyway. Uh, it has been built into the presentation. You will see how. So a little bit about me. I'm Shimantro. Uh, this presentation was supposed to be with another uh, colleague of mine called Lukash Prabhak, uh, who is uh, supposed to be around or probably might be joining later. So in a, in a nutshell. We, as a part of Fedora QA, take care of a lot of testing in Fedora, and we make Fedora better. That's the that's the motto that we swear by. Right now, going back, what does testing entail for anyone who is new to Fedora, new to open source, wants to take a, a, a it's kind of distro hopping, but wants to know a bit more about Fedora. So, the testing in Fedora entails a lot of things. And I'm going to cover a couple of them over here in a bit more details and for everybody to kind of understand what's going on and you know, how they can actually participate um, in test days and everything else. So the, the way that it we work is Fedora releases every six months. So every time we have a new release, we get a lot of changes. So as you have seen probably in Matthew's presentation yesterday, you've seen that Fedora has a lot of chain sets. We get a lot of new features every release. And these features need to get tested so that we don't have any regressions. We don't uh, face any bugs or like showstoppers kind of situation. And that's where QA team features in the first. Like we try to take test all the new features and the chain sets that come along with a new release, right? And then moving on, Every time there is a new release, you basically get a version bump of a lot of packages, which are done by packagers or are basically curated during a master rebuild. All of these packages are supposed to be tested by the QA team and the, and the people who help the QA team, who we call as the heroes of Fedora, right? And because they are actually the heroes who support making Fedora the best operating system out there, right? And then we take some special attention towards um, the crit path packages or the critical path packages uh, like for example your gnomes uh, your gnome settings or your basically entirety of nautilus um, stuff which are very critical to you like kernel right so we, we kind of make sure that these packages and any bug related to them are taken way seriously we kind of have debates with um, during our QA meetings and stuff like that. There's a blocker bug meeting specifically done to make sure that uh, we kind of not ignore those bugs. That's a part of our job. The next thing is we run a lot of test days on regular cadence. And test days are something I'm going to cover big details in the slides to come, but it's kind of like a whole day of testing for a specific feature. That's exactly the aim of a test day. And other than that, we kind of try to do something called release validation. And again, release validation is a term I'm going to cover up in as, as we move. But it's all about how we take up an ISO and how we take up a compose, per se, and then basically run a lot of test cases along with it to see how it works and you know if it actually passes everything. So that's kind of validating an ISO or rather release validation in short. We write a lot of test cases manual and automated. So we use Wiki, uh, Wiki TCMS, which is uh, using the Fedora Wiki as a test case management system. And then we have OpenQA, which is our automated testing area, which we, we use for testing a lot of releases, um, in fact, updates nowadays. And finally, we actually love to develop tools which make life easy for QA contributors. Um, so we have, uh, so our team has been participating in developing things like the packager dashboard. Um, the previous talk might have covered a bit of uh, what packager dashboard is, 
is and how it works. We develop and maintain this app called Test Days. Uh, we have Test Cloud. We have the QA dashboard, which I'm going to cover in my talk. And then the back end of all, all of these good things called Oracle and many more other things, right? And now, to kind of put in short, QA team is basically a very small team of people who does a of work like supposed to do a lot of things but we are very thankful for the passionate contributors who are across the globe and help us uh, run the show it release after release and here is exactly how you as a person can exactly get started with Fedora QA and that's basically these five steps now all of you who have been in uh, Nest uh, might have had a fast account. Uh, if you should know, fast account is the account we maintain. Uh, to, it's it's kind of like an identity inside Fedora. So all your contributions get mapped to your fast account. You are a part of fast groups. So that entails um, which particular area of uh, functional contribution that we are we are trying to do. And then we use mailing list a lot. We used uh, we use a QA list a lot. And this test list that we use is supposed to be a list where you come as a contributor to introduce yourself. You talk about um, who you are, where you're from, what's your interest. So if you're interested in um, interested in like containers or core OS, you would come down and you would say, "Hey, um, my name is such and such. I'm from such and such place, and I'm more interested in testing containers." Like, and then we would kind of reply to that email with. Um, well, you know, we have like a container test day running, or we have a core OS test day coming, or here are a bunch of test cases we are trying to develop for core OS, and hope you can pitch in. And all of these discussions happen over mailing list, so it's it's very important that if you want to get involved, you join the mailing list for all kinds of discussions that happen, right? And over that, we have two other ways you can get started right off. Uh, which is the QA meeting. Now the QA meeting is every Monday and we talk about the general topics, the general F35 status or whichever is the new release, talk about the status of that particular release. We talk a little bit about what is going on in Fedora. So if there's any bug we need to discuss or stuff like that, that happens over there. Then we cover a bit of test days, which I'm which, I'm, which is again uh, a community when everybody comes to test a certain feature per day, like one one specific day, right? And then um, we would go ahead and basically you know, use or talk about test days or upcoming test days or test days that are happening. So if you, if you happen to attend a QA meeting, you would basically be um, getting up everything in a nutshell of what's happened the entire week. Now, we usually do not skip those meetings, but when it becomes like a recurrent two, three meetings, but we don't have nothing solid to talk about, we still refer to mailing list as the source of truth where all the discussion happens. And finally, we have something that we organize every three odd months, which is an onboarding call, right? And the onboarding call is kind of like a this video call, but very lengthy. It's like a one and a half hour video call where me, uh, Jeff, uh, who is another QA team member, we sit together and we kind of demo out each and every tool. We demo out every single process. So if you're one of those who is getting started, uh, onboarding calls is the best part. So look out for them. Uh, I'll probably uh, suggest go to Pagyar, pagyar.fedorqa, uh, uh, slash fedorqa, and then you would find an onboarding call ticket where you can see the latest timings and what's happening. Right. So that, these are exactly the simple five steps. And now, having knowing this much puts you in a situation to understand, uh, or rather, what you are possibly interested in doing. And that's exactly what we're going to go over here. Right? Now, we test with friends, right? And uh, I mean, testing something without a, a bunch of people, you know, helping you out here and there is kind of a, it's kind of like boring so we go around and we use irc we refer to a bunch of other places and then we we do a bunch of this testing with the community folks. that helps us uh, get a lot of very valuable feedback on the compose uh, kind of a very upfront feedback towards developers 
And we have three areas that you can get started today if you wanted to. So the thing is, we have something called release validation. Now, release validation is for uh, folks who have somewhat like a, they, they can run a VM. Uh, they would like to go ahead from a VM, download a latest compose. And then once the once they download the latest compose, all they have to do is basically just uh, go ahead and, you know, validate the compose against certain test cases. And these test cases would have what we call as release criteria. So if some test case is broken and it doesn't work on a particular release, it violates a criteria. We kind of call it a blocker bug. And that's how we move into the process of uh, testing it from beta to final, or rather from rawhide to beta to final. Right? That's, that's the process we follow. So we take, let's say, today's latest compose, which might become tomorrow's beta, we take it after my master build and we start QAing on it, right? And then let's say network is not working or rather Wi-Fi is broken or Wi-Fi is not connecting, it's not connected to your SSID. Now that validates that should break a criteria and that's how we are gonna discuss it in the QA blocker bug meeting or we are gonna call it a uh, let's say a blocker bug, and we would put that in a blocker bug app, filing up after filing in Bugzilla, of course, and then we, we are going to validate, keep validating the release. We so this is for people who have some time, some hardware resources to go ahead with. Now, for someone who is getting started new and they kind of have very less time, they can actually opt out for the next two things. So, first is updates testing, which is simple. Every time we basically release a new operating system or rather a new version of the operating system, you know, the, the previous versions, which are still not end of life, they still need updates. And these updates needs to be tested. And that's uh, tracked by a web dashboard called Bodhi. And you can actually go ahead and perma some of these packages in a positive sense as in this work and in a negative sense as in they don't. Right, and then that's exactly what we call as updates testing. Now, test days are kind of special events. They they don't have a so-called cadence. They they are basically like whatever comes new, we take it from the chain sets. We have some regular test days as well, and we take all of these and we put that into a time frame of let's say uh, one day, two day, or even a week long. If it is a kernel, you might find something like a kernel test week. So we kind of test that exact thing for some days and we give the direct user feedback right off the bat, bat to the developer saying, hey, uh, these features are working as expected, these are not. And all of these are tracked using something called a test days app. So if you are uh, getting started, you would probably see a community blog post or a federal magazine post um, coming up announcing a test day. And that that's the easiest route to get started with or getting involved with. And now all of these all of these QR codes would point you to the right wiki pages. So it, you know whenever you want to refer back to the recordings, go ahead, scan them, uh, put them in pocket if you need them, and then uh, go ahead and use them whenever, whenever you, you need them, right? And now, that's more like consumption. Like we, we actually go ahead. So the release validation, the updates, testing, and the test days, they are a part of what we would expect every community member, or rather every community member would usually go ahead and do, right? But the most interesting part comes from the writing test cases. And that's, the, that's one of the need of the hour, to be very precise. So if, if you are... Um, if you're someone who is familiar with Linux and someone who wants to write uh, test cases for us, for packages, yeah, we would love to have you on board. And the easiest way is to follow a SOP that we have in place, which is the SOP for test case creation. Again, the QR code would point you to the right wiki um, at a later point of time. But there are two parts to this. One is writing the package test cases, which is kind of important uh, when, you, uh, when you are basically 
uh, when you're basically starting out, you see a particular package that you have been using for a really long time. There's some feature that you have been using for a really long time, but then uh, that it, when you go to Bodhi to Burma that package, you see no test case. And that's exactly what we want to eliminate. We want to basically have contributors write and maintain some of these package test cases in the form of uh, VKT CMS. And easily to do that, we cover that in depth in this onboarding session that we, we do. But in short, it follows uh, SOP where it's a very basic wiki template that we go ahead and we ask contributors to create a, a bunch of test cases for a bunch of packages they use. Often, if someone is very new to test cases and they kind of don't know how to write it or they're not familiar with wiki, we kind of ask them to update existing test cases. So we have a lot of test cases um, which kind of don't make sense after a couple of releases because they got uh, they have gotten bit rotten. So it is very important that we keep uh, wiki gardening. We kind of call it wiki gardening, but the whole idea is we have we need to update these test cases before we go run a test day or we run a we run something more uh, huge like a release validation, right? So in all the cases, we kind of go ahead updating the existing test cases if something seems uh, off the bat or doesn't work or is feels kind of dated. Like one of the extension of test cases that we did very recently is all of us have or kind of try to have a dual monitor set up these days and our test cases were not kind of blocking on bugs uh, which would basically come up if we were using a dual monitor. So we actually went ahead and we uh, extended a test case, a particular test case to cover that section of bugs. So just in case if some a reporter finds uh, something not working on a dual display, they basically go ahead and call it a blocker bug from now on because we basically added that as a part of the criteria, saying if this fails, if this test case fails, then that criteria gets validated and then we call it a blocker. Right? So that's that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff that we keep doing. That's one of the ways you can participate and help us to drive the next generation of uh, test case creations. Now, Fedora has always been a very, a very, very, very vast project. And when I mean vast project, it means it keeps coming out with emerging technologies and platforms, which are, uh, you know, which we have not actually tested like in real time ever. And when they come out, it becomes really important for our contributors. We rely heavily on contributors and the QA team basically goes ahead and helps a lot of contributors to do or rather maintain a lot of these new and emerging platforms. So we have Fedora Core OS and Silver Blue which are emerging and we have four, uh, we have three official uh, additions which is the, the workstation, the server, the IoT, right? And these workstation server and IoT are basically our primary blocking. So if, if something goes wrong in any architecture of workstation server and IoT, we we'll probably just go ahead and block it to an extent, of course. Uh, we have discussions around these blockers in something called the Blocker Bug app, which is a very separate app, again, developed by the QA team to go ahead and help contributors find blocker bugs and maintain a track of blocker bugs. Now, coming back to um, emerging platforms, now CoreOS has always been a very interesting way because it, it converges a lot of containers with pod and containers with OPDM and a lot of other stuff. So if, if anyone is interest, interested in containers and want to actually uh, help test some of these, um, reach out to me or the QA, uh, the, the test list, and we will be helping you get sorted or started with uh, Core OS testing. Essentially, we have just been having Silver Blue and Core OS test days, which is um, which is a starting point. But in in short, when they get to the addition status, when both of these or either one of these get to the addition status, we would want to have a blocker a blocker release validation from each one of them 
which would then mean that we want more contributors and more distance, right? So that's the kind of thing that we have been doing with release cycle over cycles, and that never stops. And the fun is always a part of it. Now, to, to interestingly tell a story, um, it has always been uh, a, a thing when I got onboarded to the QA team, it, it was it was a goal that we would want to bring a lot of contributors, but the only problem with that is we have we have the data separated out into multiple places. So uh, the QA team has to look for Bugzilla reports, emails for uh, you know other contributors lists, uh, probably other lists like desktop list and the kernel list. If something has gone wrong in that particular specific uh, new version right and we would kind of look at every other place to gather up information and it becomes hard right and then if you are someone who is coming back and doing QA after uh, let's say three to four months once in three to four months or even lesser it becomes really hard for you to uh, understand how how the process is working and staying updated with the with the entire uh, information that that comes during a release cycle is kind of hard and to make it easy the qa team decided or uh, rather brainstormed to create a dashboard which would give you this uh, new and stepper feeling of how to get started with qa without actually uh, you know looking individually into every single uh, thing like a bugzilla report and an email and then basically both he and remembering so many things because, because it becomes confusing, right? So here's a sneak peek for the keyword dashboard. A lot is in place and is yet to come. It's not yet released, but yeah, we are, we are going to have some more stuff coming in. So let's get started. My name is Lukáš Brabec and I'm software quality engineer at Red Hat and I was mentoring Manisha Kanya who worked on Fedora QA landing page during her outreach internship. Fedora QA landing page is a web application consisting of two parts. The first one is a QA dashboard, essentially an aggregator of various QA related information from all over the Fedora infrastructure. Information is presented in a form of widgets. Currently we have these four timeline of current release cycle, a nice way to see scheduled dates of branching, releases, and public releases. Meetings and test days in this week, so you don't have to visit Fedocal again. Blockers and freeze exception statistics to see if we are okay to go. This QA meeting minutes, an easy way to check your action items. We plan to add more widgets such as grid path help, test matrices coverage, latest open QA files, and links to the latest Fedora composers. The second part of this application is the contribution wizard. At the moment, we have a lot of helpful documents, tools, and processes, but these can be hard to reach and understand. We believe they are a major obstacle in bootstrapping new members of the community. This is the place where Manisha Kanyal contributed the most. The initial proof of concept was a bit cluttered and unrefined. Over the course of her internship, Manisha helped us create a nice looking and intuitive wizard. In the first step, you are presented with a choice. Do we have hours or days of time? Let's say you have a few spare hours and you want to help. The fastest way to contribute is to participate and vote in Bodhi Karma. Some of the steps provide help in a form of modal window. Let's go back using the breadcrumbs and choose release validation. For the absolute beginners, we created an introductory course to testing Fedora. If you tested Fedora before, choose area of validation testing you like. Working on these test cases will boost the coverage the most. Clicking on the test case will open a modal window with detailed steps.
maybe later you'll find yourself having a free day or two. At the moment, we only have easy fixes in this path. They are all about programming and fixing issues in various projects. First of all, you need to choose a programming language from the list. Let's say that you know and like JavaScript. Click on it and you will be presented with a list of projects that, based on your heuristics, use JavaScript in the code base. Choose a project based on its description or one you are already familiar with. In this final step, you will see all the tickets marked as easy fix by the project's owners. Each link opens a new tab that will lead you to the issue where you can learn more from the description and the discussion. Soon, landing page will be available at qa.fairproject.org. Currently, landing page is in English only. Once the code is stabilized, we plan on adding translations. If you want to contribute, you can find this project on Pegir. Lastly, I want to thank Manisha for choosing Fedora QA for our internship. Thank you all for attending this lightning talk. And if you are part of working or interest group, we would be stoked if you came to us with more ideas for reasonable onboarding tasks we could add. Hello, and welcome to my lightning talk about... So, that's the, that's the Qbert dashboard in a nutshell. And now I would urge uh, any one of you to go ahead and ask questions. So the way that we work is the more questions you ask, the easier it is for us to explain you and guide you to a particular place that you can get started with. So I will switch back to hop in for more questions. So thanks, Andy, and thanks, everybody. Uh, I, I guess uh, you guys love you guys love the presentation. It's an honor to work with all of you guys in the community. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Daniel. So, if you have any questions, let me know. And else, you know, you know where to find us. All right, guys. So that's that's from my side. If you still have questions, I'll be online here, and uh, you know.